This video is a small section from our Sound Operators training course. The course covers all aspects of sound operation in an audio-video format. Learn more about our training materials in the training section on our website, www.alectrosystems.com. This video explains how your mixer EQ controls work. How the EQ controls work. The general rule of thumb for channel EQs is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you have a good sound system which has been properly tuned, and you're using the right microphones correctly, you should obtain accurate sound. Be careful that you don't try to use the channel EQs like your car or home stereo tone controls. Think of them more as problem solvers than tone controls. When you have a room with a hundred people, you may have many different opinions of what the sound should be like. Some like more bass, some like more treble. You can't please everyone, and it would be rather presumptuous to think that what you prefer is the best. Therefore, my policy is go for accuracy. In channel EQ terms, this usually means straight up, or no EQ adjustment at all. But, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. Before we look at ways to use the controls, this is probably a good time to learn exactly how they work. In our mixer example on the left, we have a high-pass filter at the top, followed by a high-frequency dial, two high-mid-frequency dials, two low-mid-frequency dials, and a low-frequency dial. Some mixers have more or less controls, but they all work basically the same. The light blue dials adjust the level. They cut or boost the volume within a particular frequency band. The numbers refer to decibels. Plus 15 means you have increased the volume in that band by 15 decibels, and minus 15 means you have reduced it by that amount. Every 3 decibels is a doubling of volume. By going from 0 to plus 3, you have doubled the volume. Going to plus 6 doubles it again, plus 9 doubles it again, and so forth. As you can see, by turning the dial all the way up to plus 15, you have increased the volume in that particular frequency band to 32 times what it was at zero. That's a lot. If you do use these controls, you're not likely to need more than plus or minus three to plus or minus six decibels. The dark green dials represent the frequency band which the associated level dial will adjust. In case you're not familiar with how frequency relates to real life, middle A on the piano is 440 hertz. Every octave above is a doubling of frequency. So the A above middle A is 880 Hz, the next one is 1600, then 3200, and so on. Going down, we have 220 is the first A below middle A, 110 is below that, etc. The following graphs show how the EQ controls affect the sound. The high-pass filter, or sometimes called low-frequency roll-off switch, reduces sound below 100 Hz. This affects low notes on bass instruments and low harmonics on some male voices. It can help reduce pop and boom on podium microphones. The low frequency dial controls frequencies near and below 80 Hz. This is similar to the high pass filter switch, except it's adjustable between plus and minus 15 decibels. It can be used in conjunction with the high pass filter switch if necessary. The high frequency control provides cut and boost around 12,000 Hz and above. This is beyond the fundamental frequencies of the human voice and instruments, but there are high frequency harmonics in this range. This control can add or reduce sibilance, or S. It can be used to add crispness and intelligibility. The low mid control can be swept anywhere between 35 Hz and 1000 Hz using the frequency sweep dial. Like the others, it provides up to 15 decibels of cut or boost. This is part of the fundamental frequency range for voice and instruments. The high mid controls are very similar. They cover the 500 Hz to 15,000 Hz range. Learn how to use the mixer equalizer controls effectively with our Sound Operators training course.
Visit the training section of our website for details www.electrosystems.com